God does not want you to have anxiety because anxiety disables you. It stops you from doing what God created you for. So I want to share three steps with you on how to defeat anxiety. Number one, God does not want you to suffer with any anxiety. This is the hardest to overcome, but once you do, step two and three are easier. There are times God instantly just removes anxiety, but usually you must follow the steps God gives you in the word, because anxiety is not something God desires for you to have. He wants his children to have peace. This is the first step. You must accept anxiety is not godly because if you believe God wants you to have anxiety, you won't pursue the cure with everything that you have. I used to suffer with much anxiety, but most was unconscious. But after thinking about the fact that God does not want me to have any anxiety, the light bulb finally turned on. And I asked myself a question, the kind of question you probably know to ask right away, but I thought my way there over time. If God does not want me to have any anxiety, why am I so anxious? This question is transformational because it showed me that I'm anxious because I must be doing the opposite of what God says. So I began doing what God says to stop being anxious. And over time, I've experienced less and less anxiety. I won't spend this video breaking down many passages I could quote to show you God doesn't want you to have any anxiety. One passage is enough. But other passages you should be reading are Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 9, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Psalm 55, verse 22, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Today, I will cover one of my favorite Bible passages, which also cures anxiety. But before we look at this passage, you need to know step two. Step number two is give your anxiety, your stress and your problems to God because he will remove them. About two years ago, I made a terrible, foolish decision. I purchased a car I shouldn't have. I named it Achan, the troubler of Israel. Read Joshua chapter seven if you don't understand why. I had overlooked big problems and it brought me great anxiety because the first day driving it quickly turned extreme joy into some deep pain. Emma was stressed, our children were stressed, and it was something that could have crippled us. But I said to my wife, God is going to get us out of this situation. Trust me. And he did mightily. More on that later. Because I need you to notice when I said God would get us out of this, I said it when that anxiety first arrived. I accepted the situation. I accepted my folly, but knew that God can get us out if we take it to him and as we follow his guidance. And this is where step three comes in because it's vital for step two. Step number three is meditate on God's word about defeating anxiety. Have you ever heard of the phrase, a needle in a haystack? Most people treat God like the size of the needle and their problem the size of the haystack. When the problem is the needle and God is the haystack. Size wise, your problem is nothing to God. But you only realize this when you are reminding yourself of this daily and meditating daily on a passage like Matthew chapter 6 or any mentioned earlier is good. Let me show you and then I can talk more about Achan. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 25, Jesus says, stop worrying about three things. Stop worrying about food, drink or clothes. These are basic necessities in life, but what most of the world spend their days worrying about. Jesus then gives a powerful reason why. In verse 26 he says, birds don't sow, they don't reap or store in barns, then says, but your father, even though God created the birds, he says, your father, your father, Jesus says, provide for them. Do you want to know why he provides for them? Because they do what God created them to do. They are obedient creatures and more on this later. Jesus then asks in 27, can you change your height, your age, your body that God created? The answer is obviously no, despite people trying to. But he gives another powerful example in 28 and 29. Why are you worried about clothes when lilies don't work? But God makes them more beautiful than the richest, wisest king in Israel's history, Solomon. Jesus says in verse 30, we must stop worrying and think about one fact. If God makes lilies beautiful that are here now, and are burned up tomorrow, how much more us, O ye of little faith? This gets better. Jesus said, don't worry, have faith, because God provides for things less important, he will also take care of you. Jesus then tells us how much we should worry in 31. He says, take zero thought about what to eat, what to drink, or what to wear. Jesus says in 32, all of these worries are what the Gentiles seek. 
unbelievers waste time worrying about these things but you shouldn't is Jesus's point earlier I said God provides for the birds because they do what they are created to do do you want to know how God will provide for you Jesus tells us in 33 God will provide everything you need when you stop worrying and have faith in God you do this by seeking first God's kingdom and his righteousness seeking God's kingdom means serving the king by fulfilling your role for me this means teaching you the Bible and showing how it can transform your life when followed. And when you seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, your food, your clothes, and your drink are provided. Like the birds or lilies, you live your life doing what God created you for, and he will provide for you. In 34, Jesus says again, don't worry about tomorrow. Focus on today, because tomorrow is not guaranteed. But every today I get by doing what he created me to do, I don't need to worry about anything because he is with me and I'm more precious than a bird God takes care of on beautiful lilies. Spending your day meditating on this will change everything. God's word has the solutions for you. It's easier to do step two, take it to God when prepared. You obviously feel when anxiety is coming, don't you? That is when you need to quote passages like Matthew chapter six or think about accounts in the Bible to increase your faith. Because every time Achan troubled my house, I was thinking about verses in the Bible. And this always reminded me of the truth. God is bigger than the problem. So I should focus more on God than the problem. And when you do this daily, you start to see God is powerful. And then it draws you closer to him and one day your anxiety is gone because you are now looking at these problems in the right light you are comparing them to god and compared to him it is so small it's not even worth worrying about and that's because god is now taking up so much space in your mind your anxiety could go instantly by doing this but i promise you if you start doing these three steps everything will change for you and that's why aiken is something i can testify about overcoming today and wasn't defeated by it so do what the word says and watch what happens god bless